Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's learning. We're going to, going to do some computing this afternoon, and we're going to start a new topic, which is all called animation. Um, so this is one of my favourite topics for computing. Um, so you can see lots and lots of pictures here from different types of animated movies. So I want you to ask yourself, what's your favourite animated film or television programme? And uh, maybe you can spot it in the pictures to the side here. Um, maybe it is an animated film that has been drawn. So the artists have drawn the pictures. Maybe it's an animated movie that's been done using computer animation. Certainly lots of the newer films, so also certainly in the last 10 plus years or so, have all been done on the computer. So you might be able to see it there. And then I also want you to ask yourself, why can it be a lot more fun sometimes to watch an animated film rather than a real life film? What can you do, what can you do in um, an animated film that you can't do in a action film or real life film? Okay, so we're gonna ask ourselves what we do we already know about an animation. Um, so here we've got a old video. This is thought to be uh, Walt Disney's very first animated uh, clip. So Walt Disney, the uh, company that you watch lots and lots of films on, was founded by a man called Walt Disney. And his company created a very, very, very old uh, animation here. And I want you to think about when you think this was made. Have a little guess of when you think it was made. And we're going to watch this little animated clip. It's called Steamboat Willie. It's a very, very famous one. So we're going to watch a little bit of it now. So when do you think this movie was uh, first made? And the answer is 1928. So think how many years ago that is. That's nearly 100 years ago now that this movie was made. It's 2021 now. And it's 93 years old. So it's a very, very old movie now. Um, An animation, you can look at the, the, the video now and see what sort of things are different about this movie compared to the movies that we see today. Um, one of the most uh, sort of noticeable things is that it's, it's done in black and white. So they, they didn't have color um, videos in those days. The cameras that they use couldn't capture the, the colors. And today, everything's in color, isn't it? Um, it's very simple, basic animations. But in those days, this was um, sort of state of the art. This was brand new. This was something that hadn't been seen before. So this was brand new. This was something very exciting. So animation is described as a process where you get to see lots of still pictures move. So it looks at like the pictures are moving, but actually there are lots and lots of still pictures that are put together so they look like they're moving. And each individual picture is shot on a film one at a time. And then the pictures are shown at a rate of 24 pictures per second. So if you think about each second, so one, two, three, and so on, each of those seconds, they've shown 24 pictures. So think about how many pictures you would need just for a five second animation. If you're doing a five second animation, you would need to have 120 pictures just for five seconds. 
So imagine how much you would need for a 25 seconds or for a 60 second image. And then imagine how many pictures you would need if you had a 90 minute film. That's quite a lot of images. So one thing you can do to uh, create your own animations is to create a flip book. And this is where you get lots and lots of bits of paper and you draw pictures on them and they allow you to create a moving picture. So I'm gonna show you a quick video, uh, video now showing you how you can do that. And you might want to do this this afternoon. You need some sticky notes and something to draw with. If you don't have sticky notes, you could just use any paper. All you need to make a flipbook animation is some paper you can use. I like to use a sticky note pad, any color. I think the smaller ones are a little bit easier to flip. This practice is called the moving dot. You're gonna to turn to the very last page of your sticky notes so that when you turn the next page over, you can see where your first one was and it's easier to move it. And we're just gonna start drawing our dots right now. So go ahead and drop your first dot in on the right bottom side. Look to your next page and put the next one just a little bit to the left of it. So it's moving towards the center. Check it and make sure it's working. So here's my first check. Okay, so it definitely looks like it's moving that way. I'm just going to slowly let it get bigger. This would have been easier with the marker. So my dot is moving from the side coming into the middle and it gets bigger. That is a good place to start. So I would just practice moving a dot across or even easier, try moving a line across. Just draw a line on the side, get your next page down. Each time I'm moving it just a little bit in that direction. Now when you draw your stick figure for this animation, you can draw it any way you want. Start out with trying to make your stick figure jump. So I'm going to have him jump from here to the middle of my page. So here he is. Ta-da! Flip the next page over so you can kind of see them through. Here is your person. They're going to jump from here to here. How are they going to do it? I don't know yet. <laughs> you may want to stand up and jump and see what it looks like. Okay, so here it goes. Okay, what if you want your stick figure to get bigger? I'm gonna use the same page. So I'm just gonna start in this corner. There's my stick figure. Remember, I just flip the next page so I can kind of see through where my drawing was before and it makes it a little bit easier. To add the next step. Figure that. Okay, I'm just going to pause it there. Um, so this is how you can make very basic animations. Um, now, you don't need um, a pack of post-it notes like the ladies use in there. If you've got some paper at home, you can cut some squares out of that paper and either staple them or glue them together, and then you can create your own flip book that way. Um, but what we're going to try and do this afternoon is try and use the computer to help us do some animations. And we can do this using a program called To Animate, which you can find on Purple Mash. So what you need to do is log into your Purple Mash account. When you get to the home screen, you are looking for the Art app. So it's got a paintbrush and an easel there with some paints on it. And then right at the very top, you're looking for a program that says To Animate, and it looks like um, a film frame with lots and lots of different colors in the middle. Another way you can do it is if you look at the search bar at the top of your uh, page, top of the window, you can also type in to animate and that's another way that you can find it. Um, so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to quickly show you my screen with you so that I can show you mine. So here is my page, and I'm going to do the same thing. You can either type in to animate in the top window like that. Um, and here is to animate. So I'm just going to click on the first one. And it's going to say to launch the app. So here we go. And this is what you'll be left with. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to quickly get my little spotlight so you can see what I'm doing. So um, down the side here, we've got lots and lots of different drawing tools. And here is uh, our area that we're going to draw on. This is a bit like the uh, flip chart paper that we looked at before. And at the top, you can see here, we've got a film frame. And you can see that at the minute, we've got four frames so far. You can see they're numbered in the top corner to remind us. So we need to make sure we're on number one first. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to create our own animation of um, a face or ball bouncing or face changing. So I suggest when you're first practicing, that you practice um, doing something quite simple to begin with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to practice drawing a ball like the lady did first. So here on the left hand side, we've got lots of different marker pens and I'm going to do um, a ball. Okay. And if you click on the little um, sort of tools button here, it's got a screwdriver. Here you've got lots of different types of things that you could use to help you draw. So I'm going to select a circle and I want the circle to be filled in. So I want this one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by drawing my ball down the bottom like this. You can see at the top there, it's also changed. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to see in my next frame where the ball is to help me to uh, reference back to it, to help me animate properly. If I click on the second frame here, you can see it's disappeared. It's hard for me to see. So the computer is clever. And what it can do is it can give me a special tool that I can use so I can see a sneaky peek of where the ball is. At the very top, you can see here, we've got this picture here and it's got a picture of an onion. This is called the onion skin. And it's called the onion skin. If you've ever chopped an onion or if you've ever seen somebody chopping an onion, the skin of an onion is very thin. It's like tracing paper. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on this and what's going to happen is if I click on the next page, you can see the ball is there, okay? And it's sort of shaded. If I go back to my first frame, it's a bit darker. If I go to my second frame, it's not there anymore, but it's a bit like tracing paper. I can see where my ball is. And now what I can do with my drawing tool is I can now draw my next ball as close as I can next to it, and I'll make it a little bit bigger. And then if I go to my next frame, Oh, it's showing the last drawing I've done. So you can see I've gone from being big, quite small, to a little bit bigger. So my next one, I want to make it a little bit more bigger. And then on my next frame, so I'll click on frame four, I want to make it a little bit more bigger, like this. Okay. Now, so far, I can preview my video by clicking on the play button at the top. So if I press play, this is what it looks like so far. And when you press play, you can see that at the top here, there's some different speeds you can use. So you can make it slower if you want to check it carefully and see what it looks like, or you can make it very quick. And um, I'm just gonna press the stop button because I wanna carry on working on my animation. So, so far I'm up to frame four, but you can see at the top of this frame, there's no more frames. So what you need to do is you need to click on the plus button and that will create a fifth frame, a sixth frame, a seventh frame, and so on. So this is where I'm up to so far. So now what I want to try and do is I want to try and make my ball look like it's bouncing up in the air. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw my next ball, and I'm going to make it make it a little bit bigger. Like that. Now I don't want to change the size of my ball. So what I want to do now is I want to copy the ball I've drawn onto the next frame. So what I can do is at the top here, where my frame is, like if I hold my mouse button down or I hold it with my finger, I can actually, can you see it? The, the outside of my frame has now gone blue. I can drag that across into my next one and it will keep it the same. So it's gone from this to this, it's the same, okay? 
Now, I would like the ball to carry on moving. So down here, we've got this tool here. This tool here allows me to select. If I drag and hold it across, it allows me to select an image. And now what I can do is I can either rotate it or I can move it. So I want to, whoops, I'm trying not to move it. Let's see if I can, oh, there we go. I can drag it, I can move it up a little bit. Okay, so I've now gone from this and it's moving up a little bit. So I'm gonna carry on doing it. I'm gonna drag it to the next one. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna drag it. Oops. And I would like to move it. Let's see if I can there we go. move it up a little bit more. I need another frame. I'm gonna drag it across again. And I'll carry on selecting it. Let's see if I can just get it to move up a little bit. There we go. Make another frame. I'll keep doing this. So I'm drag it across, and I'm going to select it again, and move it up a little bit more. This time I might move it over a little bit more so it looks like it's starting to move forward. Let's put a few more frames in. So I'll drag it across and select it and move it up a little bit more. And we keep doing this. Now to be a good animator, you do need to be quite patient because it can take a little bit of time sometimes to get it exactly how you want it to look. So here we go. Now, if I go back and press play, this is what I've got so far. As you can see, I've started to make it get bigger and now it's beginning to go up and round. <coughs> so what you're going to do, let's press, press uh, pause, is you're going to have a go at animating something for yourself. I suggest you start with something simple. So have a go with doing the ball, but once, you get really good, you can actually then start to animate lots of different types of things. Um, so it is uh, lots and lots of fun, and you can animate all sorts of things, like from faces changing, to people moving. So have a bit of fun. And once you've finished your uh, animated film, if you go up to the top right uh, section where it says exit, if you click it the first time, it will prompt you to save. And that's what's a good thing to do. Now, I always say save as you go along so you don't lose your work. So another way you can save is if you go up to the top left here, where there's this purple box and three white lines. That also allows you to save your work. So if you press save, then your work, you can give your name, uh, 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 animation a name. So I would just call it animation. Keep it simple today so that we can see all your work and I can press save. And that means I've got it now saved. It won't leave. It won't. If I make a mistake or if I accidentally shut the window down, I haven't lost my work. Um, now, once you practice, let's see if I can show you an animation that I've done before. Um, so once you get quite good at animation, you can have a go at animating lots of different things. So this is one that I've done before where I have animated a face for baby crying. So here's my one. If I press play, this is what it looks like. So you can have lots of fun creating your own one. So this is one I did. And then I can open up another one that I've done before. This is one that I did called Pirate Ship. Okay, so this is what I've done as well. So here you can actually add sound effects as well. So we're gonna work up to doing that uh, later this term as well. So you can create a short list of animation with sound effects as well. So this is one of my favorite uh, uh, topics, lots and lots of fun. So your task this afternoon, everybody, is to try to log onto Purple Mash and try to create your own animation. If you're having problems logging onto Purple Mash, um, and if, if you need your password, then drop me an email and I'll try and send you your password. I think most of you have them by now. Um, if you can't log into Purple Mash and you're having problems, then have a go at creating your own flip chart animation and see if you can create an, an, animation, an animation that way. So everybody, uh, I hope you have lots and lots of fun this afternoon doing animations. Please, if you do save them on Purple Mash, we might have a chance to have a look at some of them later this week as well. So take care and I'll see you all soon.